Good morning everyone. Hello and welcome to the weekly commodity audio cast. I am Kaina Chenwala from Kotak Securities Commodities Research Desk. And like in every episode, we will be navigating through latest developments in the commodity markets, events affecting market sentiments, and explore the latest trends in this dynamic world of commodities. We know that volatile swings are not new for commodities, and this week has not been different either as risk appetite swayed with wavering rate cut bets. This sentiment struggled to maintain momentum as hotter than expected inflation readings from the US weakened the case for imminent Federal Reserve rate cuts. In line with the same, we saw dollar make a sharp rebound from 7 week low of 102.35 hit last week to 103.49 as latest US CPI and PPI figures indicate that the Fed's work in quelling inflation is not complete yet. Data released earlier this week showed headline CPI unexpectedly rose to 3.2% year-on-year in Feb from 3.1% in January. Energy costs dropped much less than expected, while prices increased at a softer pace for food, shelter and new vehicles and continued to decline for used car and trucks. Core CPI eased to a near 3-year low of 3.8% year-on-year in Feb but rose 0.4% month-on-month, topping estimates. Following this, we also saw U.S. Uh, PPI, producer price inflation, rising by 0.6% month-on-month in February, marking the largest increase since last August and well surpassing market expectations of a 0.3% advance. Uh, in line with the same, U.S. markets came under pressure on sticky inflation woes, with S&P witnessing second straight weekly loss, while Dow Jones and Nasdaq too closed weaker. Now, as we move on to gold prices, COMEX gold futures closed the week near $2160 per ounce, uh, 1.2% lower for the week, and marked the first weekly decline in four, as hotter than anticipated US inflation data forced investors to rethink rate cut in the June meeting. According to CME FedWatch tool, investors are now expecting only 55% odds of a quarter point Fed rate cut in June. Also, latest remarks by U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen this week that she regrets saying inflation was transitory and that it's unlikely that market interest rates will return to pre-COVID lows does not really bode well for non-yielding bullion. Still, we have seen that gold prices have witnessed only limited weakness um, uh, amid lingering geopolitical tensions and robust central bank buying. Also, SPDR gold ETF holdings recovered to 831.84 tons as on 15th March. Uh, recovering from nearly five-year low of 815 tons seen on 8th March. On the contrary, COMEX silver prices rallied nearly 4% and hit a three-month high of $25.66 per ounce, buoyed by gains in industrial metals. MCX silver may, uh, if we see on the daily chart, uh, it has given an upward breakout of its flag chart pattern, which is a bullish continuation pattern. So if prices sustain above 76,000 rupees, it will confirm an upward momentum and push prices uh, further upwards up to the next hurdle placed at rupees 78,000. Uh, base metals and crude oil also gained steam this week. Uh, we saw that you know uh, US stockpiles uh, witnessed its first drawdown uh, since January. Also, IEA oil market provision uh, to a supply deficit through 2024 from, supply, uh, from surplus projections earlier. Uh, Push WTI crude oil uh, more than 3% higher for the week. IEA revised up its uh, demand growth projections to 1.3 million barrels per day for 2024 compared to 1.2 million barrels per day expected in Feb report, assuming that OPEC and its allies will, ret- will retain their curbs for the rest of the year to balance oil markets. In addition, uh, heightened geopolitical tensions amid Gaza ceasefire impasse and as uh, Ukraine attacked yet another Russian refinery, Help prices breach $81 per barrel for the first time since November. Uh, on the price action front, uh, if we take a look at MCX crude oil daily chart, uh, prices have given a bullish breakout of its descending triangle chart pattern, affirming control in the hands of the bulls. Uh, in addition, price has closed above its previous swing high, and uh, so we can see pri- uh, we can see prices march towards its next resistance placed at 7,050 rupees. Talking about base metals, LNA base metals were buoyed by China's plans to boost exports to clear uh, domestic surplus of some metals, while some metals were supported by supply tightness concerns. LNA copper was the biggest gainer in the metals pack. It rallied 6%, nearly 6%, and edged closer to $9,100 per ton, 
uh, and hit a 11 month high uh, this week as China's top smelters reached an agreement to cut production uh, amid tightness in ore supply which pushed China's copper processing fees to dec decade lows. Next week, crucial economic indicators from China and flash manufacturing PMIs from developed economies uh, will keep traders wary. Chinese data is expected to reinforce sluggish economic activity in February owing to lunar New Year, holi New Year holiday uh, following new loans figures from China which grew just 9.7% last month, uh, below 10% and lowest since the data began in 2003 amid weak borrowing demand. Growth of total social financing, which is considered a gauge for futures metals, future metals consumption, slowed to 9% in February from a year earlier and from 9.5% in January. Most importantly, uh, monetary policy meetings of Japan, UK and US uh, will influence market moves this uh, next week. As the Fed is expected to hold the rates, Fed's new dot plot and Fed Chair Jerome Powell's guidance on rate cut timing will be keenly eyed. Uh, uh, Fed is widely expected to stick with three uh, quarter point reductions for 2024, same as uh, median forecast of policymakers in the de December meeting. However, CPI report is likely uh, to prompt the Fed to exercise ex extra caution in the upcoming meeting as uh, policymakers are already worried about lowering rates too quickly. So now all eyes will be on Fed dot plot as uh, US CPI has somehow dented uh, rate cut hopes. Uh, on that note, we wrap up this edition of Commodity Audiocast. We hope that we were able to provide you valuable insights into the commodity markets. So thank you so much for tuning in today and we look forward to having you with us next week. Until then, happy trading. Thank you.